Let me just give you a quick before and after of where we're headed with this whole thing. This is what hot potato looks like, and this is what it looks like to land properly. What's good, super riders? Let's talk about style. I think that style, as far as trials riders go, is a direct result over the control that you have over the bike. As you started getting into trials, that first year was dedicated to controlling the bike, being able to move the wheels around and just getting everything locked in. After you got that level of control in place, you then switched your focus to learning trick after trick after trick, which you're in the exact right place for all that. But after you start that process, you kind of stop thinking about control the way that you did when you first started. In today's video, I want to take you back to that square one because I think it can help us level up even more. So let's try a few drills to continue honing in that bike control. And we're going to apply this lesson to drops specifically. So worst case scenario, by the end of this lesson, you're going to be dropping smooth and stylish. When you first learn drops, you do this thing which I like to call hot potato. And hot potato is when you jump quickly to the edge of the ledge and then you jump off as fast as you can before you lose your side to side balance. And usually when you do that, you don't have the most graceful landing. What we're gonna do today is get you to this point where you're gonna land on the back wheel and you're gonna have a second to reset and do a proper takeoff so that you can land smooth. And all the things we're gonna do here, you don't actually even need a drop to do. We can do most of it on flat ground. So the first drill we're gonna do is gonna be on flat ground. And what you need to do is jump up to back wheel and you're gonna hold it on the back wheel without any correction hops as long as you can. As soon as you start feeling sketchy, just put your front wheel down. But the goal here is to see how long you can hang out on the back wheel. And one thing that will help you tremendously when you're doing this is moving your body position around to try to weight the bike appropriately. Maybe your bike is leaning this way, you can counterbalance it by leaning the other way. Maybe you need to sink into the bike a little bit more, but just see how long you can do it. You're gonna maybe get it for like a split second at first, but eventually you'll be able to hold it for a couple seconds confidently. Just practice this one movement of jumping to the back wheel, no correction hops, just hold it as long as you can. Why am I making you start with this really frustrating and difficult drill where you're trying to hold it on the back wheel as long as possible without hopping? Well, it leads into this next portion, which is doing perfect drops. And to do a perfect drop, you need more than a split second on that back wheel on the corner of the ledge that you're jumping off of. You need just a little bit of time to execute everything else that you want to do before jumping down. So let me explain to you what the elements are of a perfect drop. Your wheel is on the corner of the ledge. You have time to drop your weight back, which then allows you to lower your front wheel down, making the space between your front wheel and the ground as short as possible before finally letting go of the brake, not pedal kicking, just letting go of the brake so that the back wheel rolls down off the ledge and then you have time to adjust, land and roll out of it. So really, the more time you can hang out on the back wheel, the more time you have to execute all those different things, getting your weight back, dropping your front wheel, all the different elements that go into this perfect drop, you just need time for. And if you can be on the back wheel for longer without correction hopping, you're gonna have more time to execute this perfect drop. Now that you know what goes into a perfect drop, you can actually take the first drill that you were practicing of jumping up to back wheel and just trying to hold it and move it into this process of doing perfect drops. Now you can still do this on flat, which is kind of awesome. Jump up to back wheel and slowly lower your front wheel down until it almost touches the ground. And what you're gonna notice when you do that is that your body position on the bike, your hips are going way over the back wheel and you're slowly letting it down. This is a great thing to practice because this is like a dress rehearsal for the drop. You can practice this motion of jumping up to back wheel and slowly lowering your front wheel while your body goes off the back of the bike until your front wheel touches down. Once you get confident with getting to your back wheel and lowering that front wheel down, it's time to then find something small to ride off of. So a curb, a small ledge, all these different things. Because at this point, you've learned how to stay on your back wheel for a little bit longer. You've learned how to slowly let that front wheel drop. But the one thing that you're still maybe working on is that pinpoint accuracy of where the rear wheel goes. So one big difference I see between people who are starting drops and people who are smooth on drops, people who are starting drops still pedal kick 
off the edge of the drops because I still need that last little kick to get over the corner. People who are smooth at drops actually have their back wheel on the corner and they're just rolling off. So that's really a big point of going from kind of the first level of doing drops to an advanced level of drops is if you're pedal kicking off or if you're rolling off. So you wanna to get to that point where you can roll off the edge. Once your confidence is where you want it to be, getting that back tire to the ledge, lowering that front wheel down, getting your weight back and then letting go of the brake, there are really two ways to land. So I like to land two tires at the same time. And this one, you know it when you did it right and you definitely know it when you did it wrong. But for me, it helps me spread out my energy when I land. So I'm not just landing hard, I'm kind of rolling away and it brings the energy with it. But if I'm jumping off something that's a bit bigger, I like to land rear wheel first so that I have a little bit more time for my front wheel to land and for all that energy to happen. But in either case, I'm still lowering the front wheel as far as I can before I let go. Because what that does is it, it decreases the space between your bike and the ground. It essentially makes the drop smaller. But in either case, I wanna make sure that you start small and feel confident before you start going up in height. There's really no bonus points for falling off something that's higher than the next thing. It's really just about getting comfortable doing this technique and then taking it up when necessary. But don't feel like, oh, I did an eight foot drop, that must mean I'm great at drops. It doesn't really matter. How smooth you land on drops and what variations you can do on drops is way more important than jumping off the tallest thing. Speaking of drops, I made a brand new playlist for you that's every kind of drop tutorial that we've ever done on the channel and it's right here. And if you're getting really into this whole back wheel thing and you wanna continue progressing on other back wheel moves, here's a playlist that I made brand new as well.